wildlife and the landscapes of Africa are iconic across the world. Those landscapes and those systems have shaped every culture on the continent. If we as African parks can leave anything behind, it's a system of protected areas that Africa can always celebrate as being a gift to the world. The next 10 years is absolutely critical. Science is telling us that we are on the point of losing one million species. We are modifying and consuming the very system that we are dependent on. I can easily understand why people feel that there's no hope. But solutions are seldom global solutions. Solutions are found at a local level. If I look at the protected areas that we manage, every single one of those is a remarkable success. If anything, African Parks has shown what is possible. African Parks is a not-for-profit organization, and what we do is we enter into partnerships with government that own these protected areas, and then we make sure that we manage them, that we look after them on behalf of government in partnership with local communities living in and around these areas to make sure that each and every one that we're responsible for is ecologically viable, socio-politically uh, acceptable, and financially sustainable. We have come together uh, to create uh, something that is going to be sustainable uh, in the long run and uh, lead to prosperity of our people, but also lead to satisfaction of our partners. It's very rewarding as a donor and I think important work also to see uh, place-based work that where you can easily measure progress. Across every park, there are typically five key pillars in what we do. The first pillar is the law enforcement function. Making sure that the laws of the country are being properly applied to that area. That includes patrolling the park, that includes uh, an organization that knows how to manage the park and also an organization that knows how to deal with the communities outside the park. If all that happens, I think the parks have a better chance of surviving long term. A foundational requirement for any economic development is that stability, safety and security. The whole idea is to make sure that we protect very well the resources so that they spill out now to the community so that they, they benefit. The second element is the relationship with the community. Local communities that live in and around national parks are arguably the most important stakeholder in the success of that park going forward. You have to demonstrate that it's an asset. And then they have to see that the, the, the day-to-day -day life can change because the park is there. The third element is your tourism and enterprise overlay. It's very important that over time, that income is coming back into the protected area because that's what contributes to long-term sustainability. Conservation of wildlife enables uh, improving people's lives and contributing uh, significantly to the country's economy. The community are getting benefits from the park. So the community now sees the park as a source of life instead of being just a forest. The fourth element is the conservation and the science element to the project. So any activities that require reintroduction of species that might have gone extinct, the monitoring and evaluation of key species. And 
And the fifth element is the infrastructure that is actually necessary for all the other things to work. You need roads. You need workshops. Housing for staff, for law enforcement officials. You need bridges. You need telecommunications. It's all the infrastructure that's necessary for the whole thing to happen together. We benefit governments, we benefit local people, and we benefit conservation. So African Parks to me is the gold standard for a conservation organization on the continent of Africa. And, and when you have the gold standard, that's who you support. These are the very areas that are regulating climate. It is so critically important in terms of climate change and climate change mitigation. Our estimates are that there is half a billion tons of standing carbon in that portfolio. And because we manage it and protect it, there is no loss of any of that carbon into the atmosphere. Some of those parks are in the catchments of Africa's major river systems. These areas are the source of the water, they're holding the water and they're releasing the water. But all of it starts in the protected areas that we are managing. This really is conservation at scale. Science is telling us that we need to have 30% of Africa set aside where nature is the predominant form of land use. We did an analysis of all the protected areas on the continent. There are approximately 161 anchor protected areas that form the backbone of a continental conservation strategy. 92 of those are in urgent need of a management solution. So everything that we do as African Parks now is going to be focused on those 92 that are very important areas, but that also desperately need a management solution to be put in place. African Parks offers African governments a unique proposition, a clear solution to manage their protected areas to safeguard our continent's biodiversity while working pragmatically along the path of sustainable development. This is why I am personally committed to and dedicating myself to the mission of African Parks because I have experienced it firsthand how they are able to achieve tangible impact on the ground. I am very hopeful, but it is not a naive hopeful. There's a huge amount more that's got to be done. But as long as governments embrace us to continue to help them, and as long as we can find the support that we need from the global community, I see no reason why that hope should not be reality.